Hi guys, if you train Wushu or that you are a Hong Kong movie fan, you might know that Kung Fu and today's triads share common history. But how does this is related to that? Let's find out in today's video. Before getting into the main subject of today's video, we have to go through a little bit of etymology and history. First, Triads was the name given by the British colonial government of Hong Kong to criminal organizations based on the triangular logo used by some of the most powerful gangs then. In Chinese, common folks called triads, which can be translated as black societies, but the real name is San He Hui, or the Society of the Three Harmonies. This term, society, is super important. Because before we get into the relationships between Kung Fu and triads, we have to understand the history of the Chinese secret societies. China has a long history of diverse secret societies, which most of them were rebellious groups against either a government or an entity. One of the most famous ones, which founded its roots in the White Lotus sect, another powerful secret society, is the Tian Ti Hui, which in English means Heaven and Earth Society. This huge organization also known under the name Hongmen, is born in the 18th century under the Qing government and has one main purpose, Fan Qing Fu Ming, which means oppose the Qing and restore the Ming. This prominent society is nothing else than the ancestor of today's triads. If you look closely at the Hong character coming from Hongmen, the other name of the Tian Ti Hui, you can see a combination of the word Kong, that stands for unity or whole. Then, on its left, there is the water radical, also called three drops of water, in Chinese, San Tian Shui. And that's interesting, because while the full Hong character stands as a sign of respect for the first Ming emperor, Hong Wu, who chased the Mongols and the Yuan dynasty out of China, Hongmen members called themselves the Brothers of the Three Drops of Water. After the First Opium War, Southern China was devastated, and people suffered from constant attacks and robberies. And in these times of despair, the Tian Ti Hui, or Hongmen, started offering protection to these people, slowly gaining power. All secret societies were then forbidden by the Qin government and from 1854 they also received the help of the Hong Kong British government to suppress secret societies and triads. However, at the beginning of the 20th century with the end of the Qin dynasty, the Hongmen still played a huge part in helping Sun Yat-sen become the first president of the Republic of China. Hongmen kept on being active until 1949 when Mao Zedong became the first president of the Popular Republic of China, leading the secret society members to fly to Hong Kong, Taiwan, Macau and other Asian countries. Hongmen members then being separated, some of them started to create their own organizations and gangs, which some of them are still very active in different parts of the world, at different levels in the society, getting revenues mostly from illegal businesses. Now that you have a clearer understanding of the origins of today's triads, the big question is, how do they relate to Wushu? Well, they don't relate that much, but what does relate a lot to Chinese martial arts is the secret societies. For many years, and with the help of many books and even more movies, but also because the Tian Ti Hui itself said so, the biggest link that people saw in the Kung Fu with the triads or the secret societies was the Southern Shaolin Temple. Indeed, the saying was that when the Qing government burnt down to the ground the Southern Shaolin Temple, five monks, commonly known as the Five Elders, managed to survive and escape further to the south, meeting with Ming loyalists at the Honghua Ting Pavilion, 
swearing to dedicate their lives to oppose the Qing and restore the Ming, giving birth to the Tian Ti Hui. These five elders are still honored today in many traditional Southern styles as the founders of some of the most famous Southern schools, such as Honga and Choiga, which I both practice, but also Laoga, Fudga, Liga, and Mogga. While this theory, mostly based on a saying, was considered as pure fantasy for years, recent written findings in 2009 tend to give it more credit as it says clearly that five monks indeed helped with the creation of the Tian Ti Hui. But since this theory is still lacking many information, it is considered today as a status quo. What we do know for sure is that some great masters were actually active members of the Tian Ti Hui and other secret societies and did pass their styles into some of their members that later became members of the San He Hui. Still today, in some parts of the world, you can still find Wushu schools and lion dance schools that have relations with the triads. The Red Boats Opera members who had important roles in the Tian Ti Hui were also famous for taking parts in the direct and indirect development of some of the most famous Southern styles such as Wing Chun and Honga. As the secret society members often had to fight to support their cause, martial arts were then a huge part of their training and often combined with other practices such as alchemy or other mystical rituals to improve their bodies and spirits. The martial arts techniques trained by the members of the Hongmen were called Hongquan or in Cantonese Hongquin. But the Hongquin is another name for the Honga. But even though they do share the same Hong character, there are no real proof of any link between the Hongmen and the Honga, except for what I told you earlier, that many masters and martial artists of Southern styles were active parts of the Hongmen. Last but not least, but I'm sure you already know about that, it's that Wushu practitioners and Tian Ti Hui members had the same ways of recognizing themselves by using secret handshakes or hand gestures. While Honga practitioners would easily recognize themselves with the help of this famous hand gesture, another way to acknowledge your anti-Qing sentiment with others was to imitate the shapes of the Ming character composed of the sun, zhi, and moon, yue radicals, as you can see on this drawing of the form salute by Grandmaster Lam Sai Wing. This salute and many other variations can still be seen in many Southern styles today. I hope this short video will help you have a more general but better understanding of the relationships between Chinese martial arts and secret societies, which themselves gave birth later to today's triads. As usual, let me know in the comments if you have questions and if you want to see more cultural related videos like this. And until then, I see you.